In 2013, Chinese President Xi Jinping introduced the Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI, a global development strategy to connect Asia to Europe and Africa and increase Chinese dominance over the world. The BRI sponsors two main trade routes, the New Silk Road across mainland Asia and the Maritime Silk Road, a shipping route through the Indian Ocean and Suez Canal. These two routes are planned to be completed in 2049, coinciding with the 100th anniversary of the PRC. As of 2020, at least 68 countries and international organizations have signed trade and infrastructure deals with China as part of the initiative. Together, these nations contribute 65% of the world population and 40% of global GDP. The initiative's New Silk Road will build on the old trade routes of Marco Polo, establishing five economic corridors. The first is the New Eurasian Land Bridge, which runs from Western China to Europe through Kazakhstan and Russia. This corridor already includes the Silk Road Railway and a 13,000 kilometer train route connecting Madrid, Spain to Yiwu, China. The second is the CMREC, running through North China and Mongolia, connecting with the already existent Trans-Siberian Railroad. The third is the CCWAEC, running through Central Asia, Iran, Turkey, and into Europe. This corridor already has a pipeline from Turkmenistan to China, a highway from Korgos to Almaty, and the largest dry port in the world. In the future, China hopes to extend railroads through Iran, Turkey, and Southeast Europe. However, China's involvement in Central Asia is under the watchful eye of Russia, who has a large historical influence on the region and fears that Chinese involvement could risk its national security. The fourth corridor is the CPEC, running through Pakistan, which includes the Karakoram Highway, multiple large railways, seven dry ports, and nine special economic zones. This project is worth over $60 billion and is crucial to China as it will diversify its energy supply routes by providing an alternative to the Malacca Strait, which has a large American presence. However, it has drawn opposition from India, who fears that it will undermine its authority in the Kashmir region. In Southeast Asia, an economic corridor has been established, passing through Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, and Malaysia, ending in Singapore. China is financing many multi-billion dollar railways, bridges, and pipelines in this region. There is also a proposed corridor passing through Myanmar, Bangladesh, and India, connecting the cities of Kunming, Mandalay, Dhaka, and Kolkata. However, India has boycotted the proposal. As part of the BRI, China is also developing a massive ultra-high voltage AC-DC power grid. This supergrid will connect the wind and solar power stations of northwest China to the busy metropolises in east China. The initiative's Maritime Silk Road will modernize the ancient shipping passage. It will start in South China, wrap around Malaysia or a Thai canal, flow through India and Sri Lanka, reach West Africa, and end in Europe through the Suez Canal. Major developments include the Gwadar port in Pakistan, Colombo port in Sri Lanka, Piraeus port in Greece, and Suez Canal Economic Zone. These are just a few of the many projects under construction or in planning. The two routes, the Belt and Road, are planned to meet in Venice, Italy. These plans won Italian endorsement of the program in March 2019. Since its introduction, China has extended the Belt and Road Initiative around the world. Russia and China have agreed to establish an ice silk road, stretching around Siberia, through the North Sea, and down into Europe. Along this route, icebreakers will plow through the ever-shrinking Arctic ice, stopping in brand new Siberian ports. China also wants to cooperate with Russia in exploring and extracting Siberia's massive oil and natural gas reserves. Chinese and Russian interests in the Arctic have also spread into Greenland and helped contribute to the U.S.'s offering to purchase the territory. China has extended the BRI deep into the African continent, where they are planning and constructing multiple railroads and ports, including a railway through Uganda and Kenya, along with ports and railroads as far as Nigeria and Mauritania. They have already completed a $3.2 billion railway from Mombasa to Nairobi, Kenya. As of 2020, 40 of 55 countries in Africa have signed some sort of agreement on the BRI. China has extended the BRI to New Zealand and Indonesia, where they are constructing multiple railroads, dams, and other projects. The BRI has even spread as far as Latin America and the Caribbean, 
In November 2017, Panama officially endorsed the BRI, and since then, 18 of the 33 countries in the region have joined the project. The BRI has sort of become a blanket term for all Chinese overseas economic activities. As of March 2020, 138 of 195 countries in the world have signed some sort of MOU to join the project. This has raised some concerns. China presents the initiative as a good-for-all, peaceful strategy that will connect the world, fill infrastructure gaps, and improve economies. To get this message across, China has launched a sort of propaganda program supporting the initiative. On May 9, 2017, China Daily released the following video of children from around the world singing out their gratitude for the BRI. Below the video, it clarifies that China Daily is funded by the Chinese government. Kind of creepy, huh? But despite China's presentation, many fear the project is just China growing its influence. The project could certainly grow countries' economies, but only by integrating them into the Chinese network, creating an economic reliance that could be utilized by Beijing. The majority of funding for BRI projects is coming from China through the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Silk Road Fund, the China Development Bank, and the Export-Import Bank of China. Not only will countries have economic reliance, they could end up with billions of dollars of debt, forcing them to cough up important assets. Just take a look at Sri Lanka. In 2010, the small country borrowed hundreds of millions of dollars from China to construct a port which ultimately failed in drawing enough traffic. In massive debt, the nation was forced to hand over the port to China along with 15,000 acres of land around it for 99 years. Imagine these events occur all over the world. China could become a global empire through debt trap diplomacy. This prospect is especially daunting for the US, who is engaging in a geopolitical battle with China for economic superiority and global dominance. The US also doesn't like the BRI because China's diversification of its trade routes would undermine the United States' naval advantage. To counter the BRI, the US has proposed an initiative called the Free and Open Indo-Pacific Strategy, or FOIP, which demands respect for sovereignty and independence, peaceful resolutions of disputes, free and fair trade, and adherence to international rules. Despite the US's response, the initiative is still underway. By 2049, the BRI may unite Afro-Eurasia under the control of China. From 2013 to 2018, the project created 244,000 jobs. By 2050, millions more will be created. By 2040, the initiative is likely to boost annual global GDP by $7.1 trillion, or 8.3% of global GDP in 2019. It has the potential to fill infrastructure gaps, substantially improve trade, and enhance living conditions throughout Western China and Central Asia. However, it may introduce an era of Chinese neocolonialism and global supremacy. In addition, the project could seriously damage the environment and displace locals. Studies have found that the BRI's many highways, railroads, and ports would overlap with many sensitive environments, putting hundreds of species at risk, such as endangered tiger species, orangutans, fish, and the critically endangered saiga antelope. Many of the initiative's dams could cut off fish from upriver breeding grounds, spelling disaster for local fisheries and fishermen. The initiative's projects in Southeast Asia are resulting in deforestation, and the megaproject's new coal power plants will increase greenhouse gas emissions. In addition, the project's new routes could potentially introduce up to 800 invasive alien species into several countries. On top of that, the infrastructure projects will displace locals. In 2020, the BRI has become a vague yet widespread program. Companies are building projects with no Chinese involvement, but are placing themselves under the BRI name. Now, the coronavirus pandemic is threatening the initiative. No major deals have been canceled, but there are problems. Construction has halted and economies are struggling. Governments may not be able to pay back their Chinese loans. In addition, Chinese workers that are building the projects have drawn immense opposition from locals who fear that they are spreading the virus. There is also a growing mistrust of the Chinese government and its plans. Over the next few years, China will have to protect its initiative and renegotiate deals to fit the needs of recovering economies. If you enjoyed this video, it would be amazing if you like and subscribe. 
Also, remember to check out the comments and join the conversation. This video was a collaboration with Sebastian from 128 Seconds. He makes awesome informational videos in 128 seconds or less, and he's just made one about the BRI. I'm sure you'll love his channel. Link in the description. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.